got the Dallas Mavericks at the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right now over on BetUS, uh, Thunder laying five, Mavs plus 165 coming back the other way. Total sitting at 218 and a half. Um, yeah, I was going back and forth here. I I, I kind of liked what I saw out of the Mavericks uh, for a decent portion of the game. But uh, I think Luca tweaking his ankle, not only is he dealing with that ankle stuff, he's also dealing with his knee. I ended up being one of eight from the three point uh, line. I think that's the the big part of this series, the big part of this game. If he's not able to be somewhat efficient from the three, I think they're really going to struggle to get a win, get a cover against this Thunder team. And the Thunder quietly, um, you know, they've won 10 straight. They're the number one seed in the West. I understand everyone's talking about the Timberwolves and rightly so obviously beating Denver twice in Denver. Nice start for them, but thunder 35 and five straight up at home, 29 and 15 ATS at home. Uh, love what I've seen defensively at a Lou Dort. So I'm going to take the thunder here, uh, lay in the five. I, I understand a veteran team like the Mavs should get up for this game, but I don't know, man. I, I feel like Luca's not quite a hundred percent. And until I see him uh, getting some of that three ball going, it's going to be tough to trust him. So uh, Chris kick it to you. How say you on Mavs thunder? Yeah, I think I'm uh, going against a few of you here on, mm-hmm. on this one. I'm taking a shot still on these Dallas Mavericks. I'm not giving up on them just yet. Um, you know, we're seeing all the talking heads on ESPN saying, Oh yeah, Luca doesn't have as much lift. As he used to have. When the when the hell did Luca have any lift? You know, exactly. like this guy is not like Anthony Edwards. He's not like jumping out the gym, you know, game to game. Uh, his knee might be bothering him a little bit, but Luca is still, as we know, one of the best basketball players on on earth. And you know, usually after a bad performance like he had in game one, and it was a bad performance, right? Like thirty percent from the field. Uh, and if you look at his three point shooting, really the past five games, it's like yeah. it, uh, I believe it's under twenty percent. I mean, it's tough to to even uh, fathom, right, that he's been that bad from beyond the arc. But this duo of Kyrie and Luca, which just looked just kind of tired, you know, kind of lethargic in game one. Kyrie didn't come on at all in the first half, scored, I think, six points, and then ended up scoring 20, but it was just a little t- too little too late, right? And then Luca was just struggling the whole game. I think that was more of a consequence of Dallas Mavericks finishing up that last series, you know, maybe not fully healthy or rested leading up into that game one. And, of course, the OKC Thunder are uh, a machine at home, right? Like that's that's what they do. They run over teams, and that could very well happen again today, guys. But this Mavericks team, they have responded time and time again. We saw after the Clippers rang rang shot over them in that first game, or uh, ran rug shot. What did I say? Uh, in that in that first game, uh, Dallas responded, right? And they only allowed what ninety three points to the Clippers in game two. That ain't gonna happen to the Thunder. Thunder's not going to score just 93 points, but the Dallas defense has been a top five unit really in the final two months of the NBA season leading into the playoffs. Jason Kidd, I don't know how he pulls that off, but he gets his guys to play much better defense down the stretch. And I think we're going to see that a lot tonight. I mean, I kind of like some unders for that. Like we see a first quarter around 55 and a half. I think I think that's probably going to go under. Uh, the Mavericks cannot allow OKC to control this game. That's not how they play basketball. But I just expect Luka, Kyrie, these guys' shooting percentages to go up, and a lot of the guys around them too. You know, Derek Lively Jr., Daniel Gafford, uh, Tim Hardaway, who came back in his first game in Game One. They're they're all going to perform better in this one too. This is a veteran team, by the way, a team that's you know with players who have a lot more playoff and big game experience than the Thunder. I know OKC is at home, but I think this one's going to be a lot closer down the stretch. So give me Dallas plus. Uh, I think I'm getting five on this show. It's a little scary at that line, but if OKC as the number one seed was quite as elite as, as everyone tends to think they are now at this point, they should be an even bigger favorite guys. But I think the, the market is telling us something and I don't, I'm not sure they're that much better than the Mavericks even at home. Uh, yeah. A couple things to tag on there. You, you mentioned Luca, his, his three point shooting, uh, last four games, five of 35. So 14%. Um, that's I, I get like, I think, I think also this could be uh, a fun game to bet live because if his three ball is is going, I'm I'm going to be nervous about the Thunder, uh, and of course I do think the Mavs kind of an underrated defensive team. Um, you know, Junior has been preaching that a bunch. Ultimately, I would just the the home court I think is pretty good here for Oklahoma City. I do think they're a better coach team. 
Um, Jason Kidd, whenever I think of Jason Kidd, I think of that spilled soda to try to get the uh, extra time out. I don't know if you remember that, where he like intentionally spilled the soda. And then they're Brilliant. like, well, what, what'd you say, Noobs? Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> That's no timeouts. Way to stop the game. <laughs> yeah. It's a savvy move. <laughs> Uh, so that, I don't know, that always sticks with me whenever I think of Jason Kidd as a head coach, but, uh, I would say Chet, I think could have actually a better game too. kind of a quiet game by his standards. Um, you know, probably would have been rookie of the year if it wasn't, uh, for Wemby, obviously having an amazing season as well. Noops break the tie or, uh, what do you like here in this, uh, Mavs thunder matchup? I mean, the Thunder have been underrated for most of the season. I think they continue to be underrated. Now, I, I don't know if it's in a huge way. I have Oklahoma City as seven-point favorites here. Um, they're a top-five offense, a top-five defense. They have been all season. They have depth. They have defenders. They have shooters. There is literally only one thing you can complain about for Oklahoma City. They're young. So what? Jay Gilders Alexander, top two MVP candidate. Mark Dagnall, coach of the year. They've got a great coach. They've got a star. Jalen Williams continues to get better and better. Chet Holmgren looks like he's going to be an all NBA caliber center someday. It just seems to me like in a lot of ways the better team. But again, if the case of the Mavericks is if Luka can be the best player, the rest of it sort of falls in line. But I don't know if he can. That knee is a real mess. His ankle has been bad. And again, you go back and look, he's been shooting poorly in the postseason, but you can specifically tie that to him hurting that knee. He hurts his knee basically in the third game against the Clippers. Three for 14 from three, then one for nine, two for eight, one for 10, one for eight. I mean, he's shooting less than 20% from three in the last four or five games here. It's just unbelievably bad. And unless he can get healthy and sort of put this together, I think the Thunder are going to continue to sort of hum along here. There's a Kyrie game coming. At some point, Kyrie is going to take the ball and just pour it on here. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know if it's tonight. I don't know if it's in Dallas. But I know that the Thunder have plenty of guys to throw at them. They've got defenders in the starting lineup, off the bench. At any point in time, they've got somebody on the court, both, who can defend Luka and defend Kyrie. So I like the Thunder in this series going into it. I continue to like the Thunder. And I'm like them early. In the first quarter, they're minus one and a half. I know they pushed. Um, they tied the first quarter of the first game here. But you go back and look at some of those underlying numbers. Really bad shooting performance for them. If we get any regression there at all, they win that first quarter by four, almost five points. So I'll I'll take the Thunder minus one and a half in the first quarter. I have that closer to two and a half. And a guy who's been getting a lot of time off the bench, you know, one of my favorite player prop angles in the postseason are bench guys with increased usage. Aaron Wiggins, if you hadn't know already, Andrew Wiggins has a brother. His name is Aaron, and he comes off the bench for the Thunder to shoot threes and play great defense, and that's pretty much it. His point total sits at six and a half. I've got him closer to almost nine points tonight. Uh, I like him to go well over that six and a half points again as he continues to be relied on to be there to guard Luka, to guard Kyrie. And again, give me the Thunder in the first quarter as well. Uh, I lean towards the Thunder full game, but I'll just bet it early. All right, light it up for Noops. A Thunder first quarter minus one and a half. Aaron Wiggins over six and a half points. I like the Thunder minus five. Chris likes the Mavs full game at plus five. 